Sean, I'll come to you first. What does success look like for Harrison Ingram uh, for the Tar Heels in 2023? I think, uh, you know, getting getting Ingram is, is going to be – how he plays is going to be re- really important in terms of the actual long-term success of the Tar Heels. Uh, you know, he had fairly high expectations coming into Stanford as being a potential – one and done. I think he was right on that that border in in terms of ranking as well as ability. But he was kind of that next five star uh, player in in Stanford. And I think for him, probably not meant to carry a team, but I think he can be a very strong third fourth option, a very high IQ basketball player. Uh, I think before Elliot Cadeau reclass, he would have been the best best passer mm-hmm. on the team. Uh, but he you know he's a guy very versatile from. Uh, being able to score, being able to rebound, pass the ball, handle the ball. Uh, so I think success just in, takes what he did at Stanford, but from an efficiency standpoint, increases that. I think also from a three-point percentage, he was 30%, 31%. Uh, so that that needs to get up to, in my mind, I think I, ideally no less than 33, but 34 to 36%. He did have a pretty, you know, and I think one of the things – whether it's UNC or Kansas, some of the schools that were recruiting him pretty hard looked at his catch and shoot numbers um, and spot up numbers and and saw the potential there. Somewhat of a slow release, uh, so I think that you know that's that's one thing. But overall, I think a very cerebral ball player. He he played against the best of the best in AAU, playing up two years. Um, so I think success looks like him averaging ten to twelve points, uh, keeping the assist numbers high and and being able to once again help the help the ball movement and help the overall IQ of the team, uh, but I think how he does will largely determine because uh, he's going to be a big, you know, a, a big piece next to let's call it the big two of Armando and RJ. So how he does, I think, we're really, you know, is it a tournament team or is it a, a championship type team? Cheryl, what can fans expect from him? Yeah, I think. I think we've seen, as Sean alluded to a little bit, versatility is 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 a little, um, I don't know, may, maybe a little understated for his game. But I do think he's he's a kid that can kind of do a lot of different things. So, so what should UNC fans be able to count on from Harrison Ingram when he plays next season? I, I think his passing is probably the the number one thing. Uh, I think versatility is is probably number two, and it, it's interesting how he's looked at. Uh, well, I'll say this. First off, in talking to some people, I, I know the big question is, is he going to play the three? Is he going to play the four? Or can he play the three? The people I've talked to who I will say know basketball and have some knowledge of the Carolina program have said without hesitation that he can play the three at UNC. Now, does that mean they're going to ask him to do different things from what Leaky Black, who's been the primary three for, I guess, the past three seasons? Are they going to ask him to do different things? Are they going to compensate? I, I don't have that answer. Uh, but I, I do know that they believe he can play the three. So I wanted to put that out there. He will play some four. Um, he's played some four in, in practices and pickup. But I, I do think he's capable. Um, with, with him, you know, like I said, the passing and the versatility, it, it, it is just interesting because the narrative that's kind of been formed is that, you know, he had this great freshman season. He was Pac-12 freshman of the year. And then he really kind of, I don't want to say fell off a cliff, but dropped off considerably um, as a sophomore. But you look at the numbers and his offensive rating was higher last year than it was his freshman year. Uh, his effective field goal percentage. It, now, these aren't huge margins, but there is still an increase is better than it was his freshman year. His true shooting percentage was better last year than it was his freshman year. He was a better offensive rebounder last year than he was his freshman year. He had a higher assist rate his freshman his sophomore year than he did in his freshman year. Um, he shot better from the from the uh, from the field. Uh, from the two from you know two point range um as a sophomore and his three point percentage was basically the same so it, it's weird kind of trying to marry the fact where like some people almost labeling him a, a disappointment based upon his high school ranking and his freshman year when numerically his sophomore year was better than his freshman year so i i find that part um interesting but i i think it's really important for him sean said the big two there's no pressure on him relative to what he had last year as being the go-to scorer, the primary creator, arguably the best rebounder on the team. He's now, you know, he's really kind of flying under the radar because everybody knows this team is RJ Davis. They know it's Armando Baycott. And then when you have a freshman like Elliot Cadeau come in, 
he's getting a lot of the attention. So a player as talented as Harrison Ingram is kind of in the background. And I think that's maybe where he'll be a lot more um, efficient and probably even more productive than he was at Stanford because he's not going to be relied upon to do nearly as